Hey guys, this is Claudia here from The Bookkeeping Experts. I've been a bookkeeper for a long time and I have clients coming up to me with all kinds of questions. Today, we're going to talk about a very common issues, a issue, especially if you're closing the books. It is duplicated transaction. How does that happen and how to fix it? Here we go. All right, first we're gonna go to QuickBooks Online. All right, so I have a customer here, A Rental, and I enter an invoice for this customer, and this customer paid me with a check or whatever credit card, but not associated with QuickBooks, any other payment, maybe Square, whatever it is. And then uh, I go into banking, and I see the income here, and um, I see the invoice, but I don't match to the, to the invoice. I just categorize it as sales. Okay, now keep in mind, with QuickBooks Online, there is a workflow. And the reason why we have a workflow is to make sure that your sales are not duplicated. Okay, so the workflow is you enter the invoice, you send the invoice to the customer, then the customer send the payment, you record the payment, send the payment to undeposited funds, then record the payment to whatever account to, or record the, the deposit to whatever account you deposit and you match it in banking. So there is four steps, so invoice, payment, deposit, match it in banking. So four steps. And the reason why we do that is one, we don't want your duplicate, duplicated um, income to go into your income statement. Uh, two, we want to make sure that all bills, all, all uh, accounts payable are accounted for. So if you enter, enter an invoice or you enter an, a payment, you want to make sure that this process is followed all the way through so you can make sure that um, there is no embezzlement or there is no um, overstatement of income or understatement of income in your, in your income statements. So very important to follow that process. Okay, here we go. So I, let's suppose sometimes there, there may be a difference in, in, the, in the deposit and I may not even see it here. But in this case, let's just kind of ignore. A lot of people actually just end up categorizing. And we definitely don't want to match it to an invoice. It has to be a deposit. I always match it to a deposit. So we're here, we're just going to add this transaction, right? I'm not matching. I'm just adding the transaction, okay? And if I go into categorize transaction, I'll see that it was added in here. See that? Added, not matched added okay and then I go ahead and run my reports and I see a bunch of invoice open invoice especially if you run your balance sheet a bunch of accounts payable and I know that those bills have been paid or those um, invoices have been paid so now uh, what I have is what I uh, what we call a dupli duplicated transactions. How to fix it is the question. Okay, especially if there is a payment recorded um, through an app transaction. A lot of times there is an app transaction that will send uh, the payments or the deposits straight into the account, or not straight. We actually have to add them in some in some apps, and some of them will add straight. And then you end up with duplicated transactions. But I've seen customers who actually add this transaction from banking and they will go into um, their invoices, sales invoices. We have a rental. I can actually go to customer. I'm gonna look for a rental. And then I'm gonna record the payment. I've seen customers doing that. So. Kind of doing the workflow backwards right and another problem is that some customers instead of saying to undeposited funds 
they're going to send it to the checking account or to the uh, bank account. Okay, so we reported the $200 and on the 4th, keep in mind, I already added that transaction. So I'm now recording a payment and recording that payment straight into checking. See what happens. So we're going to save and close. Okay. All right. So the payment is recorded here as closed. Everything looks fine. But is it fine? No. <laughs> All right. So we end up going into the chart of accounts. And I'm going into the checking account to see what happened. We're going to click on view register. When you click on view register, you're going to see all the transactions recorded on that account, either automatic transaction coming from banking or manually entered, such as a payment to the invoice going straight to the, the account. So I'm gonna click on view register and we're gonna take a look at that fourth. And I want you to pay attention to this, this, this detail here. See that on the uh, April 4th, I see the transaction for $200, see that, $200, and is it has like the three little green um, rectangles. That means that this transaction was imported from banking and accepted from banking. And then you have that $200, which is the payment that I recorded straight into the bank account, and there is no, uh, there's no, green rectangle or C for cleared. It means that I manually enter this transaction. And as you can see, the date is the same and it's been duplicated. So how to fix it? All right. So the way to fix the duplicate transaction, you'd click on the transaction that was cleared by the bank. Okay. You're going to click on edit. All right, because it was cleared from the bank, you're going to see the blue uh, little icon uh, or blue little one online banking match on the top right hand side. If you click on it, you get, it's going to open the match that we or the, the, uh, the transaction that we accepted from banking. We want to click on unmatch. Okay, after unmatching, we want to make sure that we delete this transaction because this is the transaction that I accepted in banking. First, you need to unmatch it though because you want to make sure that this transaction is going to be sent back into bank banking. Okay, now I want you to go into banking. So on the left hand side, banking and what I did is bring back that transaction, look at this, that I had just uh, um, canceled or, or deleted. So instead of categorize, I brought it back to for review so we can make the correction. Now, keep in mind that when I recorded the payment, instead of recorded to undeposited funds, I recorded straight to the account. So that's why it's trying to match to a payment. I do not want to match your payment because there is a workflow in QuickBooks. So how to fix that? You can actually fix straight from here. So payments, you can click on payments. Okay. And see where it says deposit to says checking. I want to change that to undeposited funds. Now, I bet that a lot of people will ask, why do you want to do that? Okay. If you don't reconcile the account, it is so important for you to do that because that is the only way for you to verify that if you recorded a payment on your account, it has been cleared and matched in banking. So basically, we are making sure that all your payments are being accounted for. How important is that? Very important. And you should reconcile your account anyways because you would catch things like that. But that's another lesson for another day. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to save and close here. I sent it to undeposited funds. So what does that mean? That means that I received the payment, but I have not recorded where I deposited the money to. So the undeposited funds 
it's a clearance account. So it's going to be money in, money out, money in, money out. At the end of the day, undeposit funds should have a zero balance, zero balance. Or sometimes, you know, at the end of the month, maybe there is a few things that has not cleared. So it means that you recorded the payment, but you haven't deposited in the bank yet. That, that is possible. But at the end of the, the, each transaction, when it clear the bank, it zero out the undeposited fund. Okay, so once I recorded the payment to the right place, you want to click on the plus new on the left-hand side. Click on bank deposit. And hey, here it is. Hey, rental. Okay, now we're going to record the payment. I make, make sure that the account is correct. This one is a simple account, only has one, oh, it has savings too. But uh, basically, you know, just that one account there, pretty simple. I check the date, this is very important. Gotta make sure you check the date of the deposit. It has to match with whatever happened in banking. And you wanna make sure that the payment also match, it could be before the deposit, but never after. Because if you uh, have the payment for a date that is after the deposit is recorded, that means that you deposit the money before you receive it, it creates an error in QuickBooks. It's just a way to say, hey, what's going on here? That's not right. You can deposit the money before you receive the money. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we got everything taken care of here. We checked the, the account, bank account, the date, the transaction, and we're just going to go ahead and save and close. And now I can see that it's matching to a deposit. So remember, guys, you always want to match it to a deposit. And there it is. Okay, click on match. All right. So now, by the way, we're going to go back to the bank register. Remember, we went to the bank register by going into the left-hand side chart of accounts and went into the account. You can also do it right from here. Checking account. See where it says go register on the right-hand side here? Okay. If you click here, you're going to go to the bank register. It means, like I said, bank register means all transactions that has been cleared through the bank and also that you have recorded manually. And voila. There's only one transaction here, and it has been matched to our um, manually entered trans invoice payment transaction. <laughs> Voila! This is how you fix a duplicated transaction. Um, we do have a few videos on Square. If you have integrated Square and you see some duplicated transaction, it means that you added the square transaction without matching. A lot of times that happens, especially with other trans other type of payments and with cash and checks and third party uh, app, uh, app connected to Square. <laughs> okay, such as Grubhub or Uber Eats and things like that. So. What happens is that when, when those transactions come into Square, the amount that is deposited into Square will not match, especially if it's cash. Some people, you know, use the cash for some something else, so you keep it on the cash register or something like that. And then when you deposit in the bank, it's not the exact amount. So when you record those transactions, there is a different process. I will put some of my videos down below so you can see how it works with the app integration. All right, but the bottom line is that you don't want any duplicated transaction because if you're duplicating your income, you're increasing your tax liability and you do not have the right uh, numbers on your, your income statement. Now, it's almost time to, uh, or almost deadline for it, filing your taxes. If you haven't done so, you know, keep in mind you can ex you can apply for an extension. Um, but the reason why you want to keep your books accurate is not just because you need to file your taxes. The most important reason why a business should have accurate books is 
so that you can have a roadmap or a point of reference on your roadmap to know where you are going to. Keep in mind that in order to be, to be successful in whatever you do, you want to know, you want to have a roadmap, you want to know where you want to go. Now, if you don't have a point of reference to know where you are on that road <laughs> to success, how are you going to know where you should go? You don't. So that's the one reason why you need to have your books accurate for you to be successful, to be able to take the next step, to go to the next level. Now, a lot of people ask me, Claudia, how come you're so excited about QuickBooks Online, about bookkeeping, about accounting? <laughs> well, I like puzzles and I like to solve problems. I think it's really fun to be able to solve problems and make sense of your finances. I like to help people make sense of their finances, to be able to understand and to be able to plan their future and see them fly high, take off to the next level. It is so exciting. It's so exciting to see my clients under, understand their finance and be able to make wise decisions by knowing their point of reference. Okay, so if you need any additional help, please uh, remember we're here. You can, you can hire us for a Zoom meeting. Um, we're going to put the information down below here. Um, if you want an ongoing bookkeeper who can do everything for you so you can focus on what you do best, yeah, we can do that as well. Um, now, for whatever reason, um, just, just let us know how we, can, how we can help you. Now, if you like this video, if you found it useful, please like, click on the like below and subscribe to our channel. This is a one way for you to stay up to date with the newest video we bring with useful information on how to fix common issues on QuickBooks Online and keep your books shiny, clean, and ready to go at any time. And as always, until next time, keep on smiling.